I think it's interesting that a lot of times we go through life and we think, why is this physically happening to me? Why is my body always sick or A, B, and C? And we don't realize what's happening in the physical started in the spiritual. And what's happening in the spiritual is affected by the physical and affecting the physical. What's poppin' Goddess Gals? Welcome all the way back to the castle. It's Yael Gotti Des and today, 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 I'm going to be slowing the energy down a little bit because today's conversation can get what one may say real deep. We're talking about trauma and we're not just talking about any type of trauma like we're going to dive into a questionnaire where you're going to ask yourself do any of these apply to me and that's going to let you know how severe your trauma was as an adolescent i intentionally wore blue i wanted to really resonate and bring forth a calm energy a comforting energy and ultimately us ending the video in peace you click on this video because you want to learn or you want to resonate in some way. And so that is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be providing some information that is going to be so useful for your healing process. And the goal is not just to talk about trauma and sulk in it. The goal is to aim for healing. So let's get right into it. Have you ever had someone tell you, what's wrong with you? Have you ever seen a group of kids bullying another child? And they say, what's wrong with you? Or was it even your own parent? that you heard it first. Your own parent telling you, boy, girl, what's wrong with you? There is so much pain behind that sentence. We need to start asking the right questions to figure out why is that person the way they are? Because as a society, when we start to shift the thought of what is wrong with you to what happened to you, because now we're investigators, now we're interviewers, it shifts the dilemma, right? We're not looking at them as an antagonizer we're looking at them as a patient and we're trying to figure out what happened to you so shifting the question from what's wrong with you to what happened to you is when society will truly begin to heal truly i began to read this book over a year ago and it is called what happened to you and it is by dr bruce perry and oprah winfrey and their goal is to actually change that narrative to what happen let's get to the bottom of this this book talks about the science behind trauma and how truly our childhood has shaped the person we're looking at in the mirror we have external senses sight smell sound taste and touch they monitor what is going on outside of our body and they do this through our sensory organs our sensory organs are eyes ears nose and skin when our external senses become stimulated, whether that's smelling a good cooked meal or watching a sad movie, our neurons send a signal to the brain. What are neurons, you may ask? Neurons are informational messengers, electrical impulses that go to the brain. All sensory inputs from the outside world and from the inside world give continuous feedback to the brain. This leads our brain to keep us safe, now in the book, they talk about gathering memories for a period of time. Your brain organizes them into categories. An example from the book is eye contact. Eye contact for one child may mean I'm interested in you and I care about you. And eye contact for another child may mean I'm about to yell at you. Now imagine that. A student in high school, sitting in the back of the class, wearing big hoodies, trying their best not to be seen. I mean, if they could, they would be invisible. And then you have the teacher in the front of the class lecturing and they're saying, hey, eyes up here, right? And the person is thinking, I cannot make eye contact with this teacher. I'm going to throw up, right? They just feel so uneasy about doing that. And then what happens? Well, the teacher stops the class and says, you need to look at me, right? You need to be respectful because the teacher probably feels disrespected that the student isn't looking up at the teacher. Well, what happens when the teacher does this is now the teacher just reinforced that idea to the child, right? That looking at somebody leads to yelling. Eye contact leads to yelling or leads to somebody being upset. And so sometimes we don't even know and we're just reinforcing these traumas to people versus trying to evaluate the situation and think, hmm, 
was it just a bad day were are they tired are they always quiet i wonder why starting to question let's question these things we need to question these things and we need to stop taking things personally and look at them as why is that person operating that way if i didn't personally do something to that person to hurt them then something has happened recently or in their childhood that led them to act this way. The first few years of our life truly dictate how our brain organizes and how it sees reality. Do you feel that you've experienced a severe amount of trauma? Like more than the average person, you're like, no, I've, I've been through some things. Okay, I encourage you to grab a pen and a paper, or if you have a phone or you have a laptop, type these questions down because I'm about to read you some of the questions from the Adverse Childhood Survey. Basically, these questions are here to test and see how severe was your trauma based on all of these truly painful experiences that you could have endured. These questions will better help you understand why you may be operating in the energy and in the perspective that you do based on something that could have happened over 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna tally after each question, yes, this applied to me. If it didn't apply to you, then you can leave it blank. And at the end, depending on your score, you're going to know how severe this trauma was. Adverse childhood experience survey prior to your 18th birthday. So all of these things that occurred before your 18th birthday, if they have occurred after the 18th birthday, do not mark this as a yes if it has applied to you. This is solely based on your adolescence experience. Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often swear at you, insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid that you might be physically hurt? Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you, or ever hit you so hard that you had marks or were injured? Did an adult or person at least five years older than you ever touch or fondle you or have you touch their body in a sexual way or attempt to actually have oral vaginal intercourse with you? Did you often or very often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other or ever support each other? Did you often or very often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes, and had no one to protect you? Or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if you needed it? Were your parents ever separated or divorced? Was your mother or stepmother often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something thrown at her? or sometimes often or very often kicked, beaten, hit with the fist or hit with something hard, or ever repeatedly hit over at least a few minutes or threatened with a gun or a knife. Did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker or alcoholic or who used street drugs? Was a household member depressed or mentally ill or did a household member attempt suicide? Did a household member go to prison? That was the 10 questions. So now you're gonna add up your yes answers or you're gonna add up your tallies and that is gonna give you a number. And this number is now called your ACE score, your ACE score. Simply having a high ACE score doesn't mean you will get heart disease. It merely means your risk for heart disease goes up. I think it's interesting that a lot of times we go through life and we think, why is this physically happening to me? Why is my body always sick or A, B, and C? And we don't realize what's happening in the physical started in the spiritual. And what's happening in the spiritual is affected. By the physical and affecting the physical. Having an ACE score of five merely means you will likely struggle more than someone with an ACE score of one. Many people with ACE scores of five are healthy, productive, positive, and don't struggle. And some people with an ACE score of one will have major problems. So I think if this is definitely a case by case type of thing, they also mentioned in the book that there were some questions that they felt should have been on that survey that are not there. So if you experienced something that wasn't in any of the questions, but you feel like severely impacted you, that is probably adding up to your ACE score as well. 
So there's a story from the book. I don't remember the exact page and I tried looking for it before filming. Couldn't find it. Again, this has been a while since I've read the earlier pages of the book, but it talks about a story of a young boy. To my knowledge, this young boy, his parents had passed away in a fire. And this young boy is now placed in a foster care system. So the young boy is finally able to go to a school, public school, and he's placed with a male teacher. You know, everybody, the social workers, everyone's like, okay, this is fine. He's in school. He's been in school before. If I were to guess what age he was, I want to say around nine or 10. But if you find the age, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that because that's just an estimate from what I remember from over a year ago. So he goes to school. He has this male teacher. From the moment he stepped into this class, he did not like this teacher. He would cause scenes in class and oftentimes become very hysterical. He would disobey and he would have no respect for the teacher. The interesting thing is, is as soon as he left the teacher's class, he was fine. The crying stopped, the tantrum stopped, he was fine. One might say he was even at peace. The teacher would be stern and upset with this child thinking, what is wrong with you? One day, the social worker met with the teacher and asked him, what deodorant do you wear? The male teacher, confused, answered, Old Spice, why? The social worker told him that his father, the young boy's father, used to wear Old Spice deodorant and that the father used to abuse people in the house. And so the son took the smell of the male teacher's deodorant and in his brain it was associated with abuse so the hysterical tantrums and the pushing and the you know the the fighting of just being in this classroom was a reaction because the boy's body knew well when we smell this deodorant bad things happen right and it's interesting because a lot of people say everything is always happening all at once your brain can't really detect oh this happened years ago or hey we're not in the house with him anymore it's okay your brain is thinking everything is happening all at once it's all happening now because time is not the same when it comes to reactions in our body it could feel like everything just happened depending on how severe it was the question was never what's wrong with him their question was always what happened to him as I wrap up this video, I wanna talk about the five states of the brain and what states lead to terror. How do we get to that terror feeling? And what's happening in between then? The first state is calm, calmness. With calmness, reflection takes place. You're just kind of processing and thinking about things. State number two is alert. Okay, now we're not calm anymore. Now, okay, shoulders are are back, right? Chest might be out. I'm looking around. I'm alert. You can feel the hairs on your body coming up. You're alert. And with alert comes the word flock. State number three is alarm. So when your body is alarm, it is usually frozen. You freeze. You're like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Oh my gosh, this is happening. That's like the sentence that may run through your head. This is happening. Is this happening? This is happening. And oftentimes you freeze because your brain is like not processing is not a reflection state anymore it's going very very quickly the fourth state is fear and with fear comes flight so a lot of people see something in fear whether it's visual whether it's a spiritual thing and they're they're flighting they're they're gone oh i don't like that thing i'm gonna leave oh that ride looks scary i'm gonna go oh that man reminds me of something that happened to me as a kid i'm going the other way oh the way that the woman maybe hit her child makes me want to run away it is flight flight is associated with fear and lastly is terror and terror is associated with fight so terror is the last one and i thought that was important to talk about those different stages of when you are experiencing a traumatic reaction and, and you're remembering something that happened before you could potentially go through these stages if it is a very severe circumstance that you're in all right y'all this is definitely a different type of video that i did today but i think it is so needed and i felt drawn to talk about this because we don't want to continue these patterns and especially for those that are going to be new parents especially for those that are going to be aunts and uncles and you're if you're a friend of a friend right if you're a teacher if you're a student you're constantly surrounded by people we are social beings we are social banks. It is important for us to know these things. If you are a teacher, take a look at your students. If you are a parent, take a look at your kids and seeing they're acting a certain way. Like I wonder, like 
what did I do or say in a positive or negative perceived way that caused them to act like this or caused them to react like this when something happens? I know for me that I can give myself an example is whenever I hear closed doors, whenever a door closes really loud, I jump. It's not even a thought, like I naturally jump. And I talk to some of my siblings about it and they do the same thing. And it's because my dad growing up always closed the door really hard. And it just made me like jump. And it's so weird to me because I'm like, I'm not little anymore. I'm not trying to sneak anything. I'm not trying to hide anything. But for some reason, my body is just, it just gets tensed up and it does not like slam doors. Because usually he would be upset or irritated is when the door would just feel like it's getting shut a lot harder. So it's important that you know, okay, I'm not just reacting like this and being like, body, what are you doing? Why do you still feel like that? Remember, it's feeling like everything is happening all at once. Alrighty, y'all. Well, I post a video every week on this channel. It's always a different topic, but at the end of the day, it's always for personal development. It's always for growth. It's always for empowerment. And there are certain steps that we have to take like healing in order to be fully empowered. If you like this video and you like the content I make, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, do whatever that makes you feel like you're part of the community. But the Goddess Gals, we are an amazing community over here and we love and we empower and we inspire and most definitely transform each other's lives. Alrighty, y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.